Looking for nine foods that you can eat on a daily basis that are gonna reduce your risk of developing dementia or Alzheimer's? I don't think I have nine foods in my fridge. Well, it's time to start thinking about change. Welcome to Talking with Docs, I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. Okay, so we talk a lot about Alzheimer's and dementia. I think because yeah. A, it's so common, mm -hmm. and B, it, it scares a lot of people, right? It's something that some people feel like is inevitable or that they can't really alter their probability of getting, and obviously devastating to families and to individuals. And C, we're getting old. We, we're, we're knocking on the door. Um, so, so we've had a lot of videos talking yes. about modifiable risk factors and things mm -hmm. that you can do to reduce your chances. Obviously, yeah. nothing is, is perfect on an end of one or yeah. individual basis, right. but there are some lifestyle habits that you can do that reduce your risk. And particularly now we're focusing on some foods. Right, so food. So there's uh, a couple, um, Dean and Aisha Shurzai. They're both MDs and PhDs. Okay, so mud, mud fuds they call Pretty them. smart people. Yeah. Pretty smart, smart folk, people. we call Smart them. folk, they, they went to, um, they attended Harvard, Columbia, UC San Diego, and now they run the neuro program at Loma Linda University in California, which wow. our viewers will know this, is one of the original blue zones. Right. Loma Linda. So this is a community of Seventh-day Adventists mm -hmm. who adhere to um, a specific lifestyle of yeah. like diet and exercise and things like that, and have been shown to live longer and healthier than right. the average person. Where did they meet? They're like MD, PhD, did they put like, is there, is there a Tinder ad, MD, PhD, looking for like-minded? Yeah. I, like big-minded? Yeah, and then there only one person came up, so yeah. like, okay, I, I guess it's us, we're meant to be. Maybe, maybe they'll leave a comment, I have no idea how they met. <laughs> one person came up, oh wait, that's me. Yeah, so, so they actually have a clever little uh, mnemonic that, that's neuro that talks about behaviors and habits that you can do to change, to reduce your risk. So the, the N is nutrition. Right. The E is exercise. exercise. The U is unwind, unwind. Right? And we talk a lot about this. Like yeah. stress yeah. literally is killing you. It's killing you. <laughs> You're wound up. Yes. The R? Restorative sleep. I think they're grasping on that just to make the word neuro because sleep should be S. Yeah, but I, no, but it's about good quality sleep. So I think it, it's emphasizing Restorative. like everybody sleeps. So you, you don't say, okay, sleep, check. I slept yeah, today. Yeah, no, it's no. more like good quality sleep, know, good think, length of sleep. I think they chose the word restorative, so it was so it'd be neuro, not nuso. Yeah, I, yeah, I nobody's guess. nobody's going to pay attention if it's nuso. Right, but I think restorative is an important part of sleep because I think we take sleep for granted or have. We're starting to recognize that sleep is really important, mm -hmm. not only the length, but also mm -hmm. the quality. I've known you like 20 years. Plus. Yeah. I've never heard you say restorative sleep before. I, I, I'm going to find an old video yeah. clip, and yeah. I'm actually going to clip it into this video yeah, where no. I've used the phrase Doesn't restorative exist. sleep. And then the last one is optimizing mental activity. Again, yeah. <laughs> grabbing for letters from words. Okay. okay. So mental activity, so lifelong learning. We've yeah. talked about this in our pillars of health, you know, mm -hmm. being engaged, using your mind, having a craft, a hobby, whatever. Yeah. Okay, and the whole purpose of the food side, though, is really yeah. to reduce things like oxidative stress, and inflammation that we know are contributors to neurodegenerative decline. Yeah, inflammation is just appearing over and over and over, it's becoming more and more studied recently. You know, you know when I was inflamed? No, I can guess. On what? Saturday night. Oh, yes. So right. Saturday night, the Blue Jays came literally as close as you could I can't. to winning the World Series. I you can't. know what, great season. It's November, so the mustache that? that I'm growing is actually <clears throat> For November, the Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Oh, I thought it was chocolate milk. Yeah, and it's also an homage to Shane Bieber and he David Schneider. On. Oh, you did? Yeah, Bieber did. Oh, I didn't know Stain. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so now this mustache is for you, Bieber. Bieber fever. We got two Biebers now in Canada. Yeah, we got Bieber fever. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with the top nine foods. Okay. Okay, so number one. This is from their book. This is from so from the book. So it's the 30 Day Alzheimer's Solution. Um, it's not. It's like a cookbook. Yeah. It has some great recipes that mm -hmm. my wife and I have made lots actually out of. Mm -hmm. As well as the intro kind of explains mm -hmm. the philosophy behind changing your lifestyle to reduce your risk of dementia. Right, when was the last time you read a book? Like a so, full book. So remember, cover to cover. So if people who follow our channel, our New Year's resolution yeah. was to read more books. For you. So so. Mine wasn't, but yours. Was. No. So I have. So this year. You read a book. I did. I did. I've actually almost through my second book. Really. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, way to go. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. It, it took like uh, it took like three years. Yeah. All right. Three years. <laughs> All right. Let it rip. Okay. So number one is is as Paul's going to put his head down and shake his head is leafy greens. I like leafy greens. Right. So kale Not is probably kale. top of the list. It is the it's the king of the castle when it comes to leafy greens. It's the bully leafy greens. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of other more soft. Gentle um, arugula, leafy greens. spinach. Yeah. Um, lettuce. 
Yes, because vitamin K, folate, um, beta carotene. So lots of useful ingredients that reduce oxidative stress and inflammation. So you need to be eating your leafy greens every single day. All right. The next one is whole grains. We've okay. talked about that before. Whole grains are good because of their vitamin B, their fiber, and their polyphenols. Yes. And as we know, anything with poly in it is good. Polyphenols, who doesn't like polyphenols? And yeah, the fiber really helps reduce those glucose spikes. And a lot of people talk about Alzheimer's okay. and dementia being like a type three diabetes. Do we really want to blunt those, those sugary responses in our, in our serum glucose? Nothing can do that better than fiber. I love it. Number three is berries. Mm -hmm. So berries like blueberries, strawberries, blackberries have something called anthocyanins that are um, potent um, anti-inflammatories, reduce oxidative stress. They also have vitamin C and fiber like we talked about. What about Chuck Berry? Chuck Berry. Well, you know what? If it makes you happy, that's probably ah, worth something. Yeah. All right. I'm going to move on to um, beans and legumes, okay. all right? Because obviously, because of their B, their magnesium, and again, we got that fiber, which is going to blunt the sugar spikes. Okay. Number five for me is nuts and seeds. And I'd say I eat nuts every day. I'd say my number one nut is walnut. Really? I think if I had to, if science looked at them and said, which is the healthiest, I think the walnut is the healthiest of all of the nuts. Um, it was not my favorite before. And now I like it, I think, because I know it's good for me. But yeah. also, roasted almonds, we talked about this. Good source of calcium from our calcium video. My favorite um, is the chocolate-covered almond. Yeah, I, d I think. Well, unless it's covered in very high-quality dark chocolate, maybe. But really, it's the omega-3s primarily with some polyphenols as well as vitamin E, so that fat-soluble vitamin. So nuts and seeds. All right, your nuts. Number six is cruciferous. Fun to say. Vegetables. Fun, fun to say, fun to eat. Broccoli, cauliflower. I made a bunch of broccoli last night. Nice. On the barbecue. Little, you barbecued? Oh, yeah, like a little, okay. a little foil dish. I was barbecuing, so yes. I put in um, an old foil dish, barbecued the broccoli. Barbecued oh, broccoli. I like it. It was really good, actually. But you of course, should. fiber, vitamin C. I'd say we work hard in our house to have cruciferous vegetables every day, often just through a steamer, a little side, a little ah. side of, of cauliflower, or broccoli, or Brussels sprouts, or all of them mixed together. Mm -hmm. okay, number seven is tomatoes. Tomatoes have a substance called lycopene that has been shown to reduce inflammation. You say tomato, no one says tomato. I, I, There's a saying, you say tomato, I say tomato. No one, I haven't seen anyone say tomato. I think people do. I've never heard tomato. Leave a comment if you say tomato. Okay. Avocado. <laughs> you it's say avocado. avocado. I say avocado. Avocado. Nice. Uh, that's really good for the vitamin E, yep. C, K. Monounsaturated yeah. fats. Right, and we've had done videos before, like the you know, good fats video and bad. About yeah, avocado. good about avocados. Yeah, yeah. good yeah. fats, bad fats. Um, the monounsaturated are the good. And so the last one is green tea. Yeah. And so in the summer, I really don't drink a lot of tea, but in, in the fall, the winter, and the spring, I really work hard to try to have at least a cup of tea daily. Really? Green tea. Green tea. At night, so we have some organic decaf green tea. Oh, so yeah. I'll have that at night because I want to get some restorative sleep. The R. Because it's really important to me, my restorative sleep. Does that help you optimize your mental health? <laughs> yes. Right, um, it has something called EGCG, which is uh, an important component in, again, reducing oxidative yeah. stress. Not to be confused with CBGBs, where a lot of cool bands started out. Sure. But it's closed now. Or Halloween with the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, so what we would say is these nine foods have been shown, and these, these are all scientifically based decisions by uh, by this PhD, MD, PhD couple. So they look deep into the, the data. So this is yeah. an evidence-based suggestion. What I'd say though is do your best to get them all every day, but don't beat yourself up if you miss a couple of days. Right. And right? you know what they do when they say, well, date night, where, where do you want to go? And they both say it at the same time, they go, the library. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I'm not sure that's true, but maybe because they're working on optimizing their mental activity and lifelong <laughs> oh. learning. And Before then the when you read a book, you get tired. So that yeah. would lend, lead into the restorative, restorative sleep. sleep. And they say, maybe we should walk to the library. Yeah, you that's know? it. Done. Yeah. And then after they're done the book, they eat it because of all the fiber. <laughs> that's right. If the pages are made of kale. <laughs> oh, might as well be. Okay, so you now you know you are armed with a little checklist that you maybe can bring to the grocery store with our other video where we talk about the foods that have good sources of calcium. Yes. And actually, there's a lot of overlap. Yeah. Um, what's interesting, I think, and so they are uh, fully whole food, plant-based eaters, just, just full disclosure, as you could guess from this list. Yeah, because chicken wing didn't make it on their list. And what I would say is it's not surprising, though, that like there are very few studies that have shown, hey, guess what? Uh, filet mignon cures Alzheimer's. Like, mm. it's just not really a thing, yeah. unfortunately. There's, yeah. there, I, I, I'm, there's no study that yeah. I'm aware of that has shown a specific animal product has cured a disease. And Leave a comment if, yeah. you, can, if you disagree. Ha, and and I there suspect may, there will be. There, I'm sure someone, I'm I'm sure sure, someone from the well, carnivore think, community is going to provide I it. I would say if you have anemia, 
Yes. A filet mignon might help. Right. Yeah, but not uniquely, though. No. It's the iron, yes. Mm. But I, I, yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah, leave something. I think that would be very interesting. It would. And if you like this video. And inflammatory. <laughs> it might be, the comments might, you know, make sure you're eating broccoli while you read the comments because they might be inflammatory. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone that you know is worried about Alzheimer's or has yeah. a friend or family member that, that is dealing with this uh, for a diet that might help reduce some of this stuff. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. And your own restorative sleep. We'll see you next time.